Hello and welcome. I'm Andrew and today we're going to be creating a simple bow and arrow project for Oculus Quest as well as SteamVR. And it's going to be a pretty straightforward project. We're not going to have any super crazy interactions or pulling arrows over the shoulder. We're basically going to have our arrows instantiate on the notch on the bowstring so we can make it as simple as possible so we can focus on the pulling back mechanic. And to get started there's going to be a project template in the description. And once you download that and open it up you're going to get something that looks like this. However, I've already gone ahead and downloaded both the Oculus and the SteamVR plugin. Make sure that when you're following along, you're only choosing one of these plugins. I currently have them both in because I'm going to give a short demonstration on how, to, how we're going to be setting up the input for both of them. And then once that's done, you can just follow along as normal because all the code is the same. And to download the Oculus plugin, you just need to go to the Asset Store and just type in Oculus and you'll get the Oculus integration. And for Steam, I just need to type in SteamVR. And you'll just need the SteamVR plugin there. And once you've done that, you want to generate your inputs in the SteamVR input. If you have never done that before, I have a couple of videos that go over that. So if you look up SteamVR 2.0 input using actions, that'll show you a little bit more in depth how to do it. So now we can close out of the asset store. And let's look at what we have within the template. So let's go to our folder. And in the first folder we is for our animation. And we just have an animation controller here because we're going to be getting our animation from the mesh that we're using for our bow, which I'll talk about a little bit more about that in a second. We then have our materials folder. It's pretty self-explanatory. We just have a few materials. We have a couple of meshes, one for our arrow and one for our bow. We click on our model here. See that we obviously have an arrow. And then if we click on our bow, we have the same thing. But if we go to our animation here, and we can scrub through this pull animation. We can see that the string is being pulled back and we get a bit of flex on the bow itself. And both of these two meshes are from the SteamVR plugin. We're basically just reusing them for our own purposes. But we're going to be using this pull animation within our animation controller. So if we double click our animation controller, we'll see that we're starting at the default animation here. And it's actually a blend tree. So if we double click within that, we just have one animation here, which is going to be that pull animation. And the special thing about this blend tree, let's see if we can click on it, it's set to the blend type of direct. So we're basically going to be playing this pull animation based on how far we are pulling the string back. So we don't necessarily have to blend it between two animations. We just say, hey, the string has been pulled back halfway, so jump the animation to that point. So it's pretty simple. We can close out of that. Luckily, we won't have to do any actual animation implementation because of this. So we can close out of our two folders and we'll go to our prefabs, which we then have our bow and our arrow. So if we select our arrow really quick, we'll open our prefab and it's pretty simple. We just have our arrow script here, our rigid body, and then we have a few childhood objects here where we have a mesh sort of parent object, which its rotation has been set to negative 90. And this is all basically so we can orient it a little bit easier. And then we have the shaft and the tip, which don't have any colliders on it. Well, we have this one, but we won't be using that. And I'll explain that when we do some of the hit detection for the arrow itself. Let's check out our bow now. Which our bow has a number of things. It's going to have that animator with that controller that I just showed you, as well as our bow script. And some important things to know about our bow is that it has a socket here, which we'll be using as our notch to instantiate our arrow. And then we have a couple points that I've already set up for the start and the end point of our pulling. So we have our starting point, which is very pretty much in the same point as our socket and our end point. And this end point is when the bow is pulled all the way back. That's about as far as the string can go based on that animation. So we're going to be using this start and this end point to sort of figure out where the hand is. So we know how to play that animation. Once we start to write the code, it'll, it'll make more sense. So let's go back to our main scene. We'll close that out and then we just have our basic scripts for our arrow, our bow, and our Oculus and Steam input. But before we get into the input, let's put whatever camera rig you're going to be using into the scene. So I'm going to go to my Oculus folder, go to the VR folder, prefabs, and then the OVR camera rig. And we will reset its transform. And since this is going to be on Oculus Quest, we want to go to our tracking instead of eye level. We want to change it to floor level. 
If it was still on eye level, it would very much behave like an Oculus Go or a Gear VR, and we wouldn't get that full uh, degrees of freedom in terms of positioning with our floor. And if you're using Steam VR, we'll just need to go to the Steam VR folder, like we've done previously if you've seen one of my videos, and you'll just need to drop in the camera rig prefab right there. All right, and now let's take a quick look at our input scripts. So if we go to our scripts folder, you want to select the input game object, which it should be an empty game object, and you'll just want to drag whichever input script that you're going to be using onto this object. Since I'm going to be using Oculus, I'm going to drag that on there. But for demonstration purposes, I'll put Steam there as well, just to show you how I would set this up. Now I'm going to open up both of these scripts in Visual Studio so we can talk about them really quick. And here we are within our Oculus input script, where I've basically written all the code that we're going to be needing for our input already, and you'll just need to uncomment it. So if you're using Oculus, make sure you uncomment all this, and if you're using the Steam input, make sure you're uncommenting all of this. One thing to keep note of is that we don't necessarily have the function for pulling on our bow and releasing it, so we're going to do that now, and then we'll come back to our input scripts and actually do the implementation and filling out these public fields. So now let's open up our bow script. And here we are in our bow script, and it's looking pretty empty. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of code that's ultimately going to be in this. So what we're going to be doing is creating our, all of our variables, creating the functionality for creating the arrow, as well as writing the signatures for our pull and release so we can get the input started. So we're going to be needing a number of variables, obviously one for our arrow prefab, as well as a few public fields for those transforms that I showed you earlier for the start, the end, as well as that socket where we'll be instantiating the arrow. And we'll have a few private variables that we'll naturally be covering in the next video. So the first thing that we're going to be doing, since we have a lot of variables here, is creating a header that we'll be calling assets. And there's only going to be one little lonely variable here. And it'll just be our arrow prefab. And then we have another header that we'll just be calling bow. And these are going to be all of the variables that are going to be holding things that are either values for the bow or objects that are childed to it. So we'll be creating a public float that we'll be calling grab threshold. And we'll, we won't be covering this variable in this video, but I'm just going to write all these out so we don't have to worry about them in future videos. We'll also be making three transform variables, one for the start, point, one for our endpoint, and then finally, one for our socket. And that's it for our, all of our public variables. Then we'll just need to make a few for the current hand that is pulling on the bow, our current arrow that's going to be attached to our socket, our animator, as well as the current pull value. So we'll just call this pulling hand. Create one for our animator. And don't worry too much about these. Like I said, we'll be going over them which will probably be just a really long 20 minute video where we hopefully get the entire bow working, which I would like to do. So we're trying to lay as much foundation work as we can now so we can do, so we can do that in one video. Next, we're gonna create an awake. We'll be creating a start as well. And then we'll create the two signatures for our public pull and our release. So it's gonna be public void pull where we're going to be passing in a transform that we're going to be calling hand and another one called release where we don't need any arguments. Okay, cool. And if we go back up to awake, we'll just be setting up our animator here. Oh, I actually forgot. We need to create a coroutine now for creating our arrow because we'll also try and get that done in this video as well. We'll just call this create arrow, and we'll have a argument for this as well that we'll be calling wait time. And we're doing a coroutine because 
I mentioned before, we won't do any sort of reaching behind the back. We're going to be creating our arrows after one has been fired. So we want a little bit of delay there between each of the arrows. So once you fire an arrow and it's sort of flying away, we'll wait maybe half a second before creating a new arrow, which also explains the wait time. So we'll just do yield return now. And then in start, we're going to want to call that coroutine. So be a create arrow. And since this is going to be starting at the very beginning of our project, we want them to have an arrow automatically so we won't pass in a wait time. And then we'll scroll down here and we'll just fill up our create arrow function. We'll handle our input and I think that'll be enough for this video. So the first thing that we're going to be doing, well, let's actually write a few comments out here. We have four major things that we need to do here. We need to wait. We need to create our object. And then we also need to child it. It's another very big step. We need to orient it. And then we need to set it. So we need to create an arrow. We need to make sure it's positioned correctly. And then we need to make sure our current arrow is that one that we just created. So let's go back up to our wait. Where instead of returning null, we're going to return a new wait for seconds, which is just going to be the wait time that we're passing in for our argument. Then we want to create our arrow. So we'll call it arrow object. We'll just write instantiate. We're going to be passing in our arrow prefab as well as our socket. And if you remember, our socket is going to be that sort of empty game object that's going to be on the bowstring. And that's so when we're pulling back, the arrow is following along with the string. And you'll see the actual sort of object that we're using once we set it up in the scene. So we have that, and then we want to orient it. Because naturally, at this point, we've created the, the, the arrow, we've tied it to the socket, but depending upon the pivot point of our arrow, it may not be lined up correctly. And in this case, I believe the pivot of our arrow is going to be in the center, so we have to push it up a little, a little bit in its local space. So we'll be getting our arrow object, we'll get our transform, our local position, and we'll create a new vector 3, and our x value is going to be 0, our y value will be 0, and then our z is going to be 4.25. And this is just a value that I came up with that I think works pretty well. So that makes sure that the end of our arrow is going to be sitting on our string, basically. And then just to be sure, let's make sure that the rotation is zeroed out. There we go. And then we just need to set it. So it's going to be our current arrow. And like I showed you before on that arrow prefab, it does have the arrow component already. So we can just get it. So we get our arrow object, get component, arrow. And we're storing this so we actually have the reference to that functionality when we're pulling and releasing it, as well as firing, which we haven't made that function yet, but we will. Don't you worry. So now whatever input you're using, you'll want to hop into that script now. So I'll go to my Oculus input script, I'll uncomment the namespace, and I'll take away these comments as well. Save that, looks good, and I'll do the same for Steam as well. And there we go, and that all looks good, let's go back in Unity. And now that we're back in Unity, let's look at our input object here. And now you see we have these public fields to fill out. And naturally, we're going to need a bow. So let's go to our prefabs folder and we'll get our bow. We'll put it up here and we'll raise it up just one for right now because we're going to test to see if our arrow prefab is going to be instantiated correctly. And since we already have the bow selected, let's set that up. So we have our arrow prefab. We'll set our arrow. We'll expand the hierarchy of our bow. And we have our start, our end. Let's see if I can find the socket without too much trouble. Oh, that was easy. There we go. And then we'll go to our overrides and apply our changes. And now our bow is all set up. And I think I'll just do a quick setup for both the Oculus as well as the Steam VR one. So let's see what it would look like to set up our Oculus really quick. We have our bow reference in the scene. And we'll just drag that over. 
drag it over to our Steam one as well. And since I'm right-handed and the bow is going to be in my left hand, our opposite controller is going to be your dominant hand. So in my case, it's going to be my right. So if I go to the OVR camera rig, I'll go to the right hand anchor, drag that in there. And for the controller, since we're going to be using the Oculus Quest, we're going to be wanting to use the right touch remote. Not to get it confused with the right track remote. I don't I'm not sure if it'll work with that, but we'll click right touch. We'll collapse our OVR camera rig and we'll put our Steam VR one within the scene really quick. We'll go to our input again. If you're using Oculus, obviously you don't have to follow along at this point. I'm just showing how you would do it on both. And for that, you would go to the camera rig. You would click and drag the right controller, very similar to how we would do it on the Oculus camera rig. And then for the pull action, this would be whatever button you want it to be. And in my case, if I want to use the trigger, I'm going to use the grab pinch. And that's pretty much it. But remember, you only want either the Oculus or the Steam input within your scene. Don't have both. <laughs> So now that I've showed how to set up both of those, I'm going to remove the Steam VR one since I'm going to be focusing on getting this onto the Oculus Quest. So I'll get rid of that and I'll get rid of the normal camera rig for Steam VR. And then I'll clear out the console. And that's pretty much it for this video. In the next video, we'll actually child the bow to our left controller, but for now, we're just going to hit play and see if our arrow is actually going to be created and is lined up correctly. So we'll go up and hit play. And we don't have to worry about anything that the console is really printing out at the moment since I don't have my Vive plugged in. I'll go to my scene view, I'll double click on the bow, and we'll see that we are instantiating our arrow and it's aligned pretty well with our string here. And then if we expand our bow, we can see that we have our socket and the clone of our arrow that's going to be childed to it. And like I said previously, our pivot was most likely going to be in the center of the arrow, hence why we needed to offset it with that local rotation. And that's about it for this video. And the next one, hopefully we'll be able to actually fill out all the functionality we'll need for our bow so we can pull back on it. And then in the video after that, we'll be focusing on our arrow. And that's about it for now. If you have any questions or any problems, feel free to leave them below and I'll see you in the next one.